Welcome to Bible Study with Fred. I'm going to be reading from Ephesians, Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus, chapter 3, verses 1 and 2 today, making some very brief comments. For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me, given me to you, word. Now, Paul is a Jew. He's in prison for his work with the Gentiles. See the book of Acts for Paul's travel, starting churches among the Gentiles, and in chapter 21, for his imprisonment for the mistaken belief that he brought Gentiles into the temple. Now, Paul is in prison when he writes, saying that Christ is not only the reason for his imprisonment, but ultimately the one keeping him in prison. He is there by Christ's will for the Gentiles. That's us. <coughs> Paul did not heed the warnings of the Holy Spirit, which told him not to go to Jerusalem. Acts 21, 10 to 14. And as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. When he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle and shall deliver him into the, hands of the, into the hands of the Gentiles. And when we heard these things, both we and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What mean ye to weep and to break mine heart? For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. When he would not be persuaded, we cease saying, The will of the Lord be done. The Holy Spirit had to secure him chained to a soldier in Rome, perhaps for you and I, to get these prison letters that form the foundation for biblical doctrine for Jewish and Gentile Christians in this age of the church. You can look at this reference as a way you can look at this as a reference to the way God has chosen to deal with people in this age. Another way to look at how God dispenses grace toward us. But this doesn't have to be a period of time. God's grace is dispensed toward people throughout all history. Certainly King David, a murderer and an adulterer, was a recipient of God's grace. So was King Hezekiah and his sickness. But this is the age of the grace that leads to salvation. Colossians 1.25. Where if I am made a minister and according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Now, verse two is not literally referring to a time period, but to God's dispensing of something. The more accurate way of looking at time periods is to study the covenants of God, such as the Adamic covenant, Noahic, Noahic covenant, Mosaic covenant, etc., etc. I consider myself a dispensationalist, but if you take that too strictly uh, as a hyper dispensationalist, you will deny that the operations that God performs occur throughout all covenants and ages. Also remember that to dispense something is an action, not a time period. The covenant God has made with people, Jews and Gentiles, after Christ's resurrection, has to do with their acceptance of the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Son. God dispenses his grace toward us. This then becomes a covenant of grace, although he dispenses his grace, grace throughout all ages and covenants, John 1.14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. In verse 17, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Paul is given the unique task of presenting the dispensation of grace to the Gentiles. We are not under the law given to Moses, but enjoy the hope of salvation by faith in Jesus Christ alone. I'm going to stop there so I can break this down. Um, from what I see, and we'll start in three and four, verses three and four next time. But um, I'm hoping that you'll read your Bible, study it, cross-reference it, um, pray to God for wisdom and understanding, and then share your interpretation with someone else. Thank you very much. If you want to purchase my comments, you can get them on Amazon. It would be Ephesians Revisited because that's the second edition I did. Thank you.